she asked Ram to kill the buck to eat the meat. The reason why the Hindus have gone to the philosophy of vegetarian, there is a reason. Because other ways of life had influence, like Jainism, etc. They had influence on the Hindus. So to prevent them from going to other ways of life, even many Hindus started adopting a system of vegetarianism. The reason which these philosophies of life give, when you ask them, why don't you have non-veg? They say, see brother, you know, killing living creature is wrong. I say, I agree with you. Killing living creature is wrong. It's a sin. Therefore, having vegetables is better than doing a sin and killing animals. I say, I agree with you. If you can survive in this world without killing living creatures, I am with you. But I tell them, the plants that you have, today science tells us, even they have got life. Again, brother is interjecting. I think the person, I think brother, I have told you clearly in English, that please don't interject. I can give the answer. Not that I can't give the answer. Even the animals have got no soul. <laughs> See, brother, this is my field. I am in the field of comparative studies. I have had discussions with great scholars, great pundits, great priests. Whatever question they pose, I have an answer, alhamdulillah. But the thing is that this is a question answer time. You have interjected a couple of times. I have given the answer because you are an elderly person. We love you, brother. We love you. We want you to come for our programs always. But, <laughs> but if you allow me to complete the whole answer, and if there is any discussion, you are most welcome to ask the next question at the end of the row. So even animals have got no souls according to Islam. Animals have no soul. So if that is their logic, then why don't they have animals? There was a person who argued with me and said, okay, we believe that the plants have got life, but plants can't feel pain. Therefore, killing a plant is lesser crime as compared to killing animals. Today, science is advanced and we have come to know that even plants can feel pain. They can even cry. They can even feel happy. So your logic has failed. So one person, like our elderly brother out here, he was arguing and told me that, okay, I agree that plants have got life. Plants can feel pain. But the plants have got lesser senses as compared to animals. Therefore, killing a plant is a lesser crime as compared to killing an animal. So I said, okay, for sake of argument, I agree with you. Plants have lesser senses. But then I asked him the question, suppose your brother, if he is born deaf and dumb, two senses less, and if someone kills him, will you go and tell the judge, oh Lord, oh judge, please give the murderer less punishment because my brother had two senses less? The logic doesn't work like that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that I have given the good things for you to eat. Of the good things and the halal things you can have. So Muslims can very well have those non-veg which Quran and Hadith have permitted. I hope that answers the question. The next question from the ladies section. Assalamu alaikum. I just wanted to ask you a small question that as you said that uh, non-Muslims we can, uh, it's better to give Arabic text with the uh, translation. So we don't uh, touch the Holy Quran with without wazu. We know like what is ghusl and wazu. So they are allowed to read like that uh, without wazu. Or, and uh, one, excuse me one small more question that during traveling the compact Quran Sharif is allowed you said it's better, good to read instead of going into other things so that time also wuzu is required no? like traveling full time you need to have wuzu no? the sister asked a question that don't we require to have wudu when we read the translation or the Arabic Quran and when we give the Arabic Quran to non-Muslim without wudu how can they touch regarding wudu is required or not sister there are various different schools of thought, various different schools of thought. And when they quote the quotation which I said, Surah Waqiyah chapter 56 verse 77 and 80, that quotation does not refer to human beings, it refers to angels. And I said in my talk that they prove it from the Quran, you should have wudu, it's a misinterpretation. And I've given you several references. It actually refers to the angels. It doesn't refer to human beings. But there are different schools of thought. For example, the Hanafi, the Shafi, the Maliki, the Hanbali, each one have their different school of thought. The Hanafi says that you cannot touch without wuzu, but if it's covered with a piece of cloth, you can touch it. Some Hanafi scholars say that the cover itself, the hard cover itself comes in between, so you can touch the Quran without a cloth, but with a cover. Some say you can touch 
the Quran, but not the Arabic text. Various views. Among the Shafis, the Shafi scholars say that you cannot touch without wudu, even if it has a cover. Various views. Malikis say somewhat similar, but the Malikis say that if a student wants to learn the Quran, and if a teacher wants to teach the Quran, even without wudu they can touch. Even if they are in the stage of Danaba, of ceremonial impurities, the Maliki school of thought says that you can touch if he is a student who wants to learn the Quran and if he is a teacher who wants to teach the Quran. Because otherwise, the ladies who are doing hips of the Quran, they will forget within the few days. Different school of thought. Humbly, different school of thought. If you analyze, if you analyze that even the Zahiri school of thought, what they say, and Ibn Hazm, he has discussed this thing in detail. According to Ibn Hazm, he says there is no prerequisite. There is no condition at all for touching the Quran. But naturally, all scholars agreed, wudu is preferable. But according to Ibn Hazm, he has quoted several hadith, several Quranic references saying there is no authentic hadith which clearly specifies that any condition is required. You can even touch the Quran without wudu. You can even touch if you are in seminal impurities. According to Ibn Hazm, various different opinions. But if you analyze that even the hadith with the scholars quote of the Muatta, that you should be tahirin, the person should be tahir, tahirin, pure. If you analyze the Arabic word, it actually means those who are pure. It does not refer to those who are in wazu only. And this comment you can find in uh, Sayyid Abul Allah Maududi, in Dawatul Quran of uh, Shams Pirzada, in Ibn Qasir, in Zamakshari, in various. That it refers mainly that you should not be in ceremonial impurities. Even if you agree that the hadith is sahih, that tahirin means that you should not be in ceremonial impurity. If you are in ceremonial impurity, means after sexual intercourse, or if you are having menstrual cycles, at that time you should not touch, according to that hadith, if it is sahih. It doesn't refer that you should be in wudu. But there are different schools of thought, you can ask them why they think that way. But I agree with it totally that with wudu is much preferable. But touching without wudu is not haram because nowhere does the Quran say, neither does any Sahih Hadith say about that. Regarding can it be given non-Muslim? According to Ibn Hazm, even a Muslim can touch in the state of ceremonial impurity. Whether it's right or wrong, you can refer to his books and check it up. But if you agree with that, a non-Muslim can also touch. But my main argument which I put forward, as the Quran says, reason with the people with hikmah. Udu ila sabili rabbika bil hikmah wal ma'uzat al hasna wajadilum billati asan from Surah Nahal chapter 16 verse 125 he says invite all the way of the Lord with wisdom and beautiful preaching and argue with them and reason with them in the ways that are best and most gracious if you analyze the Quran gives a challenge one of the challenges I mentioned in the answer to Ali Flam Mim that try and produce a surah like the Holy Quran if all the human beings got together the Quran says in Surah Isra chapter 17 verse number 88 that if all the human beings got together, along with the jinns, they will not be able to produce the like of the Quran. And again the Quran says in Surah Nisa chapter 4 verse 82, it says, أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرَانَ وَلَوْ قَانَ مِنْ إِنْدِي غَيْرِ اللَّهِ لَوَجَدُوا فِي اِخْتِلَافًا كَثِيرًا They do not they consider the Quran with care. Had it been from anyone besides Allah, there would have been many contradictions. There would have been many discrepancies. So Quran gives a challenge to those who don't believe in the Quran, the non-Muslims that do you not consider the Quran with care? Had it been from anyone besides Allah, there would have been contradictions. So when the non-Muslim has to consider the Quran, when Allah gives a challenge, but naturally he has to hold it in the hand. He can't check whether the Quran has contradiction or without holding it. So when Allah gives a challenge to them, and if they can hold it, then who are we to stop them? And if Allah holds me responsible on the day of judgment, I said in my talk, I will be in the company of my beloved Prophet. When the beloved Prophet can give verses of the Quran to non-Muslim, do you think you are more holier than the Prophet? You are more holier than the Prophet? Prophet gave verses of the Quran to non-Muslims. So why can't we give? So if you analyze and read the Quran with understanding and the Sahih Hadith with understanding, you will realize that we should deliver the message to the whole of humankind, including the non-Muslim, as well as give them the message of the Holy Quran. Hope that answers the question. Night. I wish to express my sincere appreciation for the marvelous task that you have performed today. Alhamdulillah, you have done a splendid job. 
and i pray to allah subhanahu wa taala that allah gives me and all the boys present here and everyone present here to implement all the things that you have disclosed today coming to my question is i would like to ask you regarding one question which ponder some non muslims allege that the quran which we muslims possess today was compiled under the authority of the third caliph usman radhiyallahu taala anhu so they say how do you prove that it is the word of god could you please express your views on that the brother has posed a very important question and i do agree with him that there are many non muslims who allege that the holy quran you have today has been compiled and authorized by the third khalifa hazrat usman may allah be pleased with him and all the remaining copies he burned so but naturally there are many types of quran and only one has been authorized and compiled by hazrat usman therefore may allah be pleased with him therefore there are many versions and the one that you have may not be the word of god etc etc regarding how to prove it is the word of god you can refer to my video cassette is the quran the word of god that this quran logically you can prove it is the word of allah subhanahu wa taala regarding why did he burn did he compile etc it's completely wrong to say that hazrat usman may allah be pleased with him he is the person who compiled the quran and authorized it in fact the quran was compiled in the presence of the beloved prophet muhammad peace be upon him whenever any verse of the holy quran was revealed to a beloved prophet he immediately memorized it and then proclaimed it to his sahabas their sahabas memorized it and immediately the prophet asked the sahabas to write it down and whenever it was written down the prophet checked it we know very well the prophet was ummi he could not read or write but he had a method of checking for example the first two verses to be revealed of surah iqra surah alaq chapter 96 verse 1 and 2 is iqra bismi rabbikal ladhi khalaq khalaqal insana min alaq he recited that dictated it to the sahabas they wrote it down after they wrote it down the prophet said read it now so they read iqra bismi rabbikal ladhi khalaq khalaqal insana min alaq okay correct if there was a mistake he used to correct it so whatever was revealed he used to tell the sahabas he used to memorize it sahaba used to memorize it he used to check the memory of the sahabas whether they memorized it correctly or not then after that when they wrote it he used to check whether the written material is right or wrong and whenever any revelation came he even told the scribes that this verse of the holy quran will come after so and so sura so and so verse all this was divine because the way the quran was revealed we don't have surah iqra verse 1 and 2 in the beginning of the quran it is the 96th chapter so whenever it was revealed after it was told by beloved prophet to the scribes that this verse will come after this surah and this that we 